Hey guys, it's Rochelle and welcome back to my channel. So I'm back with another video for you guys and this is the hair tutorial that we are doing today. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how I achieve this hair color. So it's like a ash blonde, black ombre situation going on here. Now, this hair was actually inspired by Arrogante. I follow him on Instagram. I absolutely love his wigs. His work is amazing. So I had to recreate this when I saw it on his page. So if you wanna see how I achieve this look, then please continue to watch. All right guys, so this is the wig that we are working with today. This wig is actually by Julie's Hair. I've worn their bundles before, but I've never actually worn their wigs. This is my first time wearing their wigs, and this is how the wig looks. So I haven't um, tweezed the hairline, I haven't colored it as yet. This is it in its original state. I will put all the hair info in the description bar down below. And to achieve this color right here, you're gonna need some Wella Color Charm T35 Toner. And I'm gonna be using the Salon Care Cream Developer in number 10. You can use any brand cream developer. I'm using the Salon Care, it really doesn't matter. Now grab yourself a mixing bowl and pour your toner into that mixing bowl. I use a total of, I think I used two toners to tone the entire hair and I'm gonna use the cream developer. So you wanna mix two parts cream developer into one toner. If you are using two toners, you're gonna use four parts cream developer into that toner. All the instructions is on the little box that you get on the toner. So mix it all around. And yes, I will be putting on my gloves very, very soon. All right, so now we're gonna tone the hair. You wanna put your hair into small sections just to get it out of the way. And I'm gonna be starting at the very back. Make sure you're wearing a gloves and get your little brush out and start applying this toner all over the hair. So yeah, I'm just applying it evenly all through the hair and I'm just gonna go in with my hand just to massage it all in. And I'm just gonna be working my way up to the top. I'm doing this pretty fast because I don't wanna overtone the hair. So I'm at the top and as you can see, the hair is starting to change color. Um, be careful, make sure you keep an eye on this. You don't wanna overtone the hair. I find that some hair, they tone a lot faster than some. This one actually toned pretty fast. And you guys, this is actually my second time attempting to do this color right here, like this whole entire wig. I actually filmed this last week and it was an epic, epic fail, okay? I used completely different products, but I loved how this one came out. Last week was an epic fail, so I had to try it again because I really wanted to recreate this color. All right, so now I'm gonna leave the toner on for about 10 minutes, and I'm gonna step off camera and wash it out. I did not use any shampoo or conditioner, I just used water to wash it out. Now we're gonna move on to the fun part. So I'm gonna use the Adore Black Velvet hair dye. This is their semi-permanent dye, and I'm putting it in this bowl right here, and I'm just gonna add some hot water to this. So we're gonna be doing the watercolor method today, keeping it nice, easy, and simple. And as you can see, my wig is still on the wig stand. So this is what it looks like after toning, and I'm just going to dip the hair into the watercolor, and ta-da, you got black hair dye. <laughs> And the black hair dye is going to give it a really nice ombre effect when you do the watercolor method. So I chose to go with this method. Now how far you wanna take the black is really up to you guys. Now when I made this wig first, so this is the wig I didn't make. I did not make this wig, but I made a wig last week and I did the same color. However, I took the black way up, way up too high and oh, it looked tragic. I wish I could show you guys, but I threw it out. But yeah, it, looked, it was a hot mess. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm going in with my brush also. So after I'm done watercoloring, I went in with my brush and apply the black semi-permanent hair dye onto the hair. And I go in and I make sure I wipe my hands off on a towel, just so I don't get black in the areas I don't want it. Now the reason why I'm going in with my brush and applying the dye by hand after watercoloring is because when you do the watercolor method, it gets diluted. So the water being mixed with the dye, the black dye is not as intense. So I have to go in and just make it a little bit more intense. And then I also miss some parts of the hair when you do the watercolor method. Sometimes you don't get every single strand of hair. So I just went back in and just to make sure I got all the pieces that I wanted to be black. And as you can see, I'm just using a saran wrap just to, just so the hair does not, the black hair dye does not touch the blonde and everything gets all blended in together. 
that's not the look we're going for. We want it to look really nice and have an ombre effect. All right, so I'm gonna leave the dye on for about two hours. I want this color to get as intense. You can leave it on for much longer. And I'm gonna step off camera and wash the dye out. I use cold water to wash it as well. That way it doesn't bleed a lot. Now the hairline on this wig needed a bit of work. So I'm gonna go in with my water bottle and my tweezer and I'm gonna part the hair and start tweezing behind the hairline just to get that hairline to look a bit more natural. I'm not gonna be super detailed with this part of the video because I do have a video that is completely dedicated to customizing your wig and how to tweeze and pluck your hairline to get it looking you know as natural as possible so I will link that video in the description bar down below all right so moving right along I'm gonna go ahead and start blow drying this hair so we can start styling her and I'm pretty sure you guys know how to blow dry hair already so we're just gonna move on to the next step so I'm just gonna grab my curling one and I'm gonna start curling this hair I wasn't sure how I wanted to wear this hair but I think I wanted to wear it curly just to see how it looks curly so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my curling one this one is a one and a half inch curling one. It is old. I got it at Walmart like years ago. It's from Remington. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap that hair around that curling one and hold it for about maybe 10 seconds and then let it go. Look at those curls. It's really, really looking nice with this color. Now I actually went ahead and brushed out these curls. I did not want them to be super tight curls and I went in with some got to be free spray and just applied and this is just how the hair looks once it's curled. I just want you guys to see how it looks. Now I went ahead and I brushed the curls out because I don't really want it to be too curly but I'm gonna go ahead and apply this wig now. So I'm using a scissors and a Kind of like a razor blade type of thing make sure you're not going too close to the forehead because you can cut yourself i've done that before and i like to cut my lace in small pieces small sections and i'm going to be using the bold hold lace glue so i'm just going to go ahead and apply a bit of that glue onto my forehead and i'm going to go in with my sponge and then my blow dryer make sure that glue dries first before you apply another coat so i'm going to be applying two coats today and I'm doing the same thing, repeat the same step. I do have very detailed videos on how I apply my wig. Now that the glue is dry and tacky, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that lace down and press it down with my rat tail comb. And then I'm gonna go back in with my blow dryer and I'm gonna go ahead and dry that glue into that lace. So we're gonna melt that glue into the lace and I'm actually using it on the hot setting, on the warm setting, because I find that it really, really melts that lace down really, really good. But when I'm drying the actual glue before I put the lace down, I use it on cool setting. And now I'm gonna go back in with my scissors, and it's actually an eyebrow razor. That's what I, that's what it is, I think. <laughs> but anyways, um, nothing has changed when it comes to applying my wigs. The method is the same. The only thing I do different is I cut my lace in small, section it can be time consuming but guess what you're only going to be doing this once once you cut the lace off it is gone forever so the first time when you're applying a brand new wig yeah this part can be time consuming and again you got to be very careful when you're cutting by the ear as well because you don't want to cut off too much lace you just want to cut off the right amount of lace and i'll be honest with you guys i actually hate applying my wigs on camera because i'm always so scared that i'm going to mess up my lace cut it up and screw up the whole thing because i'm literally using like a freaking small mirror and i'd rather be in front of a big mirror so i can see what i'm doing so i can cut it properly so i'm trying to be really really careful as i cut this lace and by the way guys i am wearing a wig cap so i did the ball cap method i do have a video on how to do the ball cap method i definitely think it was necessary especially with this color hair um, I don't always do the ball cap method, but I have to do it when it comes to like lighter hair. And now you can see that I'm actually going back in with my tweezer because I felt like this hairline needed a bit more work. Like this hairline was not looking like uh, the most natural, so I was trying to get it together. And I added some hair serum to my hair. I'm literally out of hair serum, I needed some more. Now, you guys, I love this wig. The only thing I did not like about it, the parting room. Do you see my side part? It was a really small part. This wig is really meant to be worn in a center part. 
not really so much as a deep side part but listen I was trying to make it work because you know I love my side part and I just thought it would look really good with this hairstyle and I'm just gonna go in with my hot comb just to flatten down that wig so she's not looking bulky on the top and this next step is completely optional so I'm gonna go ahead and part that hairline and go ahead and cut that piece of hair just to create some baby hairs I'm gonna go in with my baby hair toothbrush thingy <laughs> and I'm using some hair mousse so I just put some hair mousse onto that brush and again I'm gonna cut little tiny baby hairs I'm gonna keep them as natural as I possibly can because I don't like when they look too extreme I want them to look natural so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and create some I'm just gonna go ahead and apply some of that hair mousse into my hair the one that I use it's by so gorgeous I get it at Sally's and I'm just gonna go ahead and just apply it and then go back in with the hot comb just to flatten down the top a bit and then I'm gonna go ahead and apply this pantyhose you can use a hair scarf I like using this but it literally keeps the wig down nice and flat and it also melt down that lace so it's gonna really melt down my lace and you don't really need to leave it on for very long now I'm just gonna go back in quickly with my flat iron just to add some more curls I know I curled it I brushed it out and then I went back and curled it again but I wanted the curls with the flat iron I felt like they were more voluminous and I just liked the look of it so yeah this is pretty much how she is looking and this wig is transformed she's looking cute comment down below and let me know what you guys think of this color let me know what color you guys want me to try next I'm so sorry it took me forever to post a new video but I'm gonna be posting a lot more frequently. So yes, I will see you guys in another video very, very soon. I love you guys so much and thank you for watching and supporting my channel. I love you, bye.